Okay, this video is a pre-lab for your Hardy-Weinberg model lab. Um, it's pretty much a mating game, right? Because all we really care about in the terms of evolution is um, whether or not you survive and are able to reproduce to form a new generation and pass on your alleles to the next generation. Now, with the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, right, we have those five... Um, conditions that must be met. Um, be sure you know what those five conditions are because we're going to manipulate uh, those conditions um, in this model. So this is a model of the Hardy-Weinberg um, equilibrium. So how this model is going to work, um, I'm going to have, or you are going to have, four cards. Right? I'm going to go ahead and separate them out a little bit because these two cards are representing uh, individual x and these two cards are representing individual y okay so you have two individuals i'm having one student have a uh, use two different individuals or represent two different individuals in this population individual x and individual y the reason why we're doing that is because one of the postulates of um or one of the conditions of the hardy weinberg equilibrium is we need to have an infinitely large population and this will allow, obviously, it not to be infinitely large, but it will allow it to be twice as big as the number of students in the classroom. Okay. In addition to uh, your uh, four cards, you're also going to have a little post-it note, which I would want your post-it note to look something along uh, these lines. Okay. Um, like that. We're going to have X, and we're going to have Y. Okay. And then this is... In every single one, there should be an initial and a final, even though the initial really, really is going to be the same in every case. Um, and you're going to do that for each of your six, that's not really a great one, um, each of your six boxes right here. Now, these three boxes, or these uh, six boxes, these two right here are representing um, simulation one. These two right here representing simulation two. These two right here representing simulation three. Now, um, if you uh, want to make things easy, as soon as you get this flashcard, go ahead, or as soon as you get this uh, um, sticky, go ahead and just write this out as is. And for your initial, and since all three simulations are going to be the same to start with, um, both individual X and individual Y are going to start off as heterozygous. Okay, because um, these two cards that you get for each individual are representing the genotype for that individual. Okay, and they are going to we're going to be looking at um, one gene uh, in this model, and that is the gene A, whatever it is. Now, gene A has two alleles. It has the dominant allele and the recessive allele. So your cards, when you start off in every instance, you're going to have a big A, a little a, a big A and a little a. Now your uh, letters in your uh, in your stack or in your four cards, um, they'll be colored. They'll either be red or blue. Um, I'll talk about what the color means later because the color is what's going to allow us to um, to uh, present uh, some sort of uh, interruption of the equilibrium. Okay, so by, I'm going to use those colors to show you how genetic drift occurs, or non-random mating occurs, or um, something along those lines. Some sort of, um, let's see, what should I say, some condition is no longer being met, right? Now, in the first simulation, um, we are going to assume that all of those five conditions for the Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium are going to be met. Uh, for solution, or for situations, or uh, for situations two and three, um, we will mess with some of the conditions that will you know, uh, irrevocably change the um, uh, the equilibrium, change the gene pool. Okay, so how are we mating, so to speak, uh, in this lab? What we're going to do is we're going to swap cards. Okay, that's all swapping that we're doing. So um, you would take your you in your hand. You have four cards. Uh, your two cards on the left are going to be for X. The two cards on the Y are going to be for Y, or on the Two cards on the right will be for Y. Um, and you're going to simply um, either you can pull a card and give it to an individual, uh, you know, another uh, student, or you can have that student pick, you know, one of those cards. So 
um, pretty much in either way, you are giving away one of your X cards and you are going to give away one of your Y cards. Okay? But at the same time, the person that you're mating with is also giving away one of their X cards and giving away one of their Y cards. Okay? And if I were you, I would just go ahead and do um, X first, or it doesn't really matter because they're all the same, they're all the same uh, gene. So um, if you were to give you know, one of the X's to uh, your partner, right, uh, then you should get an X back. That will fill the X for your individual. And then likewise, when you give a Y away, they should give you a card that will um, be from their Y, right? But um, in either case, that would be considered one mating cycle. And you're going to do this five times for each individual. So X will mate five times, Y will mate five times. Okay? And of course, you don't have to have ten different mates. Um, you can if you want to, but you don't need to, meaning you can mate the X individual and the Y individual with the same student. You don't have to, like, if, you know, Billy, here's Billy, hi Billy, right? Here's Billy, and here's Sammy, right? And here's uh, Pat, right? So here's Pat. Now, obviously, Sammy and Pat are androgynous names, but um, it doesn't really matter if you mate with another male or you mate with another female. If you're a female, it doesn't matter because it's just a simulation, just a card. But what I'm saying is you can swap X and Y. Billy can swap X and Y with Sammy. He does not have to swap X with Sammy and then Y with Billy. Okay? He doesn't have to, or Y with Pat. Um, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't really uh, matter. You can do that that way if you'd like, but it's just easier and it's a lot faster if Whoever you pick, you know, whoever you choose to mate with, just go ahead and mate both individuals. Mate the X and then mate the Y. Okay. By the time it's all said and done, these five mating cycles, um, we should have started off with AA, right? They all should have started off AA, and then X should end up with a phenotype. So after the fifth mating, okay, just keep track in your head, right? When I get to my fifth mating, say my final genotype was little a, little a. And then for Y, it was homozygous, or sorry, heterozygous. And then at the end, let's say it was still heterozygous. So you're writing that in information down. Okay? And then at the end of every uh, simulation, so at the end of simulation one, at the end of simulation two, and at the end of simulation three, um, we're going to tally up all the alleles to determine the allelic frequency, and then, um, or tally up all the individuals, and then you will determine the allelic frequency of both big A and little a in that population and see if it's changed. Okay? Um, and you're going to do the same thing again for s simulation two, but simulation, the principle behind it, simulation two, is the exact same as simulation one, but um, I'm going to throw a little curveball in there, right? I'm going to change one of the conditions that could uh, likely and probably will affect the allelic frequency of the final population. Okay, and I'll do the same thing with number three. So we're going to have two different situations where we're most likely going to have some evolution occurring. And here we're not as likely to have evolution occurring um, here. Okay, it doesn't mean that we won't because, remember, we don't have an infinitely large population. So there is always a possibility um, that we could end up with evolution. But... Um, chances are we should end up with nothing, or at least logistically, we should end up with no change. Okay? But down here, most likely will end up with some change by the time it's all said and done. Okay? So, quick review. We're going to swap cards. It's going to represent a sexual uh, exchange of uh, genetic information. Okay? You're going to swap five times, and then in your little flashcard at the end, you write down your phenotype at your uh, for your X and Y individual at the, uh, at the very end, and then we'll calculate some data from that. So you, we are all going to model three, one, two, three different scenarios and see if Hardy-Weinberg holds up. Okay? If you guys have any questions about this, okay, um, you can either comment below, you can send me an email, or um, ask me in class.